everybody and welcome to another video about the game king i wanted to share some information with you guys that i had found out that is going to make your experience with this a whole lot easier and i also wanted to kind of chronicle the effort that it takes to fix some of these problems i want to thank everyone that bothered to comment on my previous videos that i made about it or that had shared any information with me on the different JAMA forums and we'll see what we can do here to show what we're getting into we've got Donkey Kong here on the screen as you can see it's a vertical game that the software has it stretched out all the way we want to see if we can fix that we want to see if we can save high scores we also want to see if we can fix the missing samples and I'll show you what it sounds like without that. As you can tell there was no sound whenever the girders were falling. You've got no sound when Mario jumps. So hopefully we can get the sample files in the correct folder on the hard drive. Now, new information. Great stuff here. Uh, first off, if you ever have a problem with your Game King not coming on, I found this out. I know that some people have asked if you have to have an arcade power supply hooked up to the Game King. Some people have said yes. The manual says that you have to. I've never actually spoken with anyone that can confirm that you don't have to have an arcade power supply hooked up to it. But I have found out through my own experience that often whenever if you have it hooked up with a power supply, sometimes when you turn it on, if you have the Game King hooked up to say the same circuit breaker, as you do your arcade cabinet and you turn both of them on at the same time for some reason the Game King won't catch and I've even ran into it where I would turn the cabinet on not even have a power cord plugged into the Game King and when I turn the cabinet power on it would actually draw enough power through the JAMA connector to turn the fans on on the Game King, the heat, either the heat sink fan or the case fan, which means it was drawing the 12 volts from the, the JAMA power supply in the cabinet through the little JAMA connector. And if it did that, then the Game King wouldn't come on whenever I actually turned the uh, power on to it. So if you run into some issues where it kicks on and you hear the exhaust fans come on, but it doesn't actually boot up you may want to put it on like two separate plugins or two separate adapters and hit the Game King power first then your cabinet power supply now as far as new information I found out some great stuff here in my other video I mentioned that there was on the back of the Game King of course we're just running a hacked version of Windows and some emulators on a standard desktop PC. There was no way to access the Windows environment, which as far as I know is still correct. But I did find this out. You can hook up a set of headphones or a set of speakers to the green audio out jack that's on the back of the Game King. The PS2 mouse and keyboard connectors are not connected at all they do not get power at all however the USB connector on the back both of them do get power and they work fine now what does this mean you can hook up a mouse you can hook up a keyboard you can hook up a USB trackball and you get access to some stuff through that that makes your life a whole lot easier. For some reason, whenever I initially tried this, the Game King did not like my 
wireless dongle that I plugged in for my wireless keyboard and mouse. And right now I've got a wired keyboard on it and a wired mouse and it works fine. And I'll show you what makes that great. First thing, on your main Game King screen, if you've got it up, you can hit V, Victor, on your keyboard and cycle through the video options. S-E-G-A, B-G-A, N-P-S-C, P-A-L. And if you noticed, whenever I was on NTSC 15 kilohertz, kind of had some waves up here at the top. I heard uh, on some forums some other people they'd run into that same problem with the monitors on some candy cabs. I don't know if it's with a particular monitor manufacturer or what it is, but I had to go to PAL to get it on here correctly. The next thing, the Z button on the keyboard will bring up the system settings. Now, right now, there's not a whole lot that we can do with this, but it keeps from having to flip the physical dip switch on the back of the Game King. Next, if we hit I on the keyboard, that brings up the uh, game list to change the locations of the games around. What you would need to do on this, say I wanted to move Street Fighter from Wrestle to what, whatever here. I would press I, I would go down, pick what I wanted it to go to, hit start. Now, if I go to Miscellaneous, you can cycle down and see that Street Fighter is now on miscellaneous. Now in order to save that change that I just did, I would have to hit the Z button. I would have to drop down to game list setting and save current game list. Otherwise it doesn't save your changes if you reboot the system. Of course I'm, I'm not going to save that. The next thing, this is pro probably the most useful thing that I have found. If you start a game up, <clears throat> excuse me, if you hit tab on your keyboard, you get the main menu. You can go down and change, customize your buttons, you can change the dip switches, you can do all the normal stuff that you would do within the main settings. And for example, we will go and change this to free play. So we're going to go over here, put free play on, return to main menu. We'll reset it to make sure that it did accept that. And as you can see, it says free play. Now to get it to save these changes, what we have to do is exit out of the game, go back to this menu again with the Z button. We have to go to config files, save, yes. And it takes it a few seconds to go through and save your configuration. that you just made. Skipped ahead a couple seconds there to, so you didn't have to stare at a menu. Next great thing that I found out where we have the ability to use the USB keyboard at the main screen we can shut this thing down properly now. What we're going to do is hit Control alt delete you will see our nice Windows 2000 Chinese version screen come up. You want to go to the top right option.
you'll have three options here. It automatically defaults to the middle one. The top one is power off. The bottom is restart. And I think the middle one that it defaults to is log on as different user. But we want the top one. And it's cut off. So we're going to go now and unhook this thing and see if we can get access to the hard drive. We are back and we have made headway into this little endeavor. We've got the Game King laying over here, got the hard drive pulled out of it. I initially was going to use this netbook and this little shitty IDE to USB adapter. Once I got the hard drive pulled out, I realized that I was trying to put a female to female end. That's not going to happen. So I had to pull it out and put it in this desktop PC. And you can see it right there. Plugged into the IDE slot and then the power cable to it. Found out that the software here is actually a derivative of the old Baby Star family of multi-game pirated arcade boards it is a 16 gigabyte solid state IDE hard drive with two partitions the second partition has just these backup files and all they are are backups of the game configurations I would assume that they are what the um, Game King whenever it goes to restore default settings I guess that's where it pulls it out of. Not a whole lot interesting here on the hard drive other than the fact that this thing uses a shit ton of different emulators. And by a shit ton, I mean that it uses just basically three different emulators, but it uses about 10 different versions of MAME. Uh, if you go to the emu folder, you'll see game one two three and it goes down through here then multi each one of these is the folder for whatever emulator it is that's installed on and it uses every type of main version that you can think of i mean old is dirt newer versions so whenever i had to go in and edit the main i and i files i had to do it about a dozen different times on a dozen different versions of MAME. What I did was I changed the, see here, clean stretch, changed that to none, and then keep aspect, we changed that to one. I did that for every MAME I and I file here in these folders. I copied the samples folder over to all of these. And for what it was worth, I also put the highscore.dat file in each one of them to maybe get it to save the high scores. I found out that this Game King uses the Final Burn Alpha for the Neo Geo emulation and some of the CPS2 and CPS3 emulation. It uses Zinc for the um, 3D games like Tekken, Star Gladiator. Um, as you can see here, it uses Nebula for some. And it's kind of random. It's got two or three different versions of Nebula. It's only got one version, I think, of Zinc. Maybe two. But it has many, many different versions of MAME on here. It uses old old versions it uses newer versions and i guess there's some type of configuration in the front end that tells it which version of it to pull up for which game on the menu whenever you go to play it for example here's the zinc folder now as far as i know there wasn't really anything in the zinc emulator or the final burn emulator or the nebula e emulator that i wanted to change maybe change the bios version on some of the Neo Geo games um, but as far as 
settings like the aspect ratio and stuff I, I couldn't think of any off the top of my head that needed to be changed and if this works of course if there's something we need to change we can always just pull this hard drive back out and find what we need to change and, and fix it I'm not too familiar with the settings within Nebula or Zinc I've never used either one of those at all Final Burn and Final Burn Alpha I've used it a little bit but not a whole lot So we will close this thing out. I'm going to install it back in the Game King, put it back into my cabinet, and we'll see if we've got it fixed. We are back, gentlemen, and I have some excellent news. Check it out. Not only do we have the correct aspect ratio, and the samples. We've even got high score saving enabled. And everything seems to work great. Um, the high score saving, I tried it out on a couple of the classic arcade games that uh, all use the same setup there for the high score saving. Tried it on Donkey Kong Jr., uh, Galaga, Galaga 88, Pac-Man, and a couple others. And it worked without any problems at all. And um, I also checked out the aspect ratio correction on a couple of vertical games and as far as I could tell uh, everything did exactly what it was supposed to do um, I didn't alter any of the main settings other than the aspect ratio and the high score and then added the samples I didn't do anything else with the resolution settings I noticed that it um, was set up so that everything would go to 640 by 480 force it into that resolution I didn't really want to mess with anything because right now I've got the Game King hooked up to a CRT monitor in an arcade cabinet just as a to test to fool around with it I've actually I intend to plug it into a cabinet that's been uh, had the CRT removed and replaced with a VGA monitor so I didn't want to change a bunch of settings and then get into it not working correctly only to have to fool with it whenever I put it in the VGA monitor cabinet. But anyways, the high score saving works. The samples are on there and we've now got the correct aspect ratio. So we're in good shape and we found out how to access the test menu, at least for the main games. I'm sure that the, um, the Final Burn games and the Nebula games probably do the same thing. If I just knew the keyboard shortcuts for them, we could check them out. Um, the uh, Zinc emulator, I, if I'm not mistaken, it doesn't have too many versions available. And I think that the one that this is actually running, this uh, Game King, the 2019 one, probably is going as good as it's going to get. Um, I would think some of the games may be supported in MAME now but you probably have to have something a little bit faster than a 2 gigahertz or 2.7 whatever it is to, to run smoothly so 3D games are probably just not our wheelhouse whenever using this piece of shit outdated hardware but anyways I hope you guys learned something I know I did through this process and if you've got any other ideas on this, if something we need to fix, let me know. I would really like to know how to set up a power down option from the main menu. I've noticed that some of the newer versions of this Game King or Family Game or Baby Star or whatever you want to call it, they will have an option to power down the PCB as the very first thing that you can pick on the top of the menu. I don't know if that's something an end user has put on or if it's something that's actually comes with it. 
I wish we could do that with this rather than relying on the control alt delete trick with the keyboard at the main menu sorry for the abrupt cut there guys but I had one last thing that I found out and I needed to splice it in here to this video before I uploaded it I was checking out some of the keyboard commands on some of the different emulators and apparently something that is universal across all the different versions of both MAME, Final Burn, Final Burn Alpha, Nebula, whatever that it's using. If you open up a game that actually has a test menu that's not an older game that relies on physical dip switches, but actually has a test menu or a BIOS menu or whatever, if whenever you go into the game, no matter what it is, if you hit F2 on the keyboard, it will bring up the soft dip menu settings menu whatever you'd like to call it um, that works with all the emulators it even works in main if the game that you're playing has a um, an actual test menu I'll show you here this is a different version of Final Burn if I hit F2 it goes to it on that and it works on any of the games that I have tested so far that has a soft dip menu rather than actually relying on physical dip switches in that case you'll have to go to the old tab menu here but if you don't want to do that instead you can see that you can just hit F2 on the keyboard and it'll go straight to it so F2 on your keyboard is wired up as the test button on the arcade games so sorry for that abrupt cut there but I just found that out and I wanted to put this information on this video before I uploaded it again thanks a lot for watching this and I appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to go along with me on this thanks again see you